All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's version of the Brown Bag. I have a special guest with me today. Uh, my name is Melissa Gurney. Uh, you can find me online at Solution Geek, and my special guest is Jill Jubinski, who um, I will let you introduce yourself, Jill. Cool, yeah. So, uh, Jill Jubinski, and I'll get into a little bit of who I am uh, in my prezzo, but I am kicking off week three of Jill, week three and final week of Jill Vember. So uh, in this special series of V Brown Bags, we're doing all like human career focused uh, V Brown Bags instead of like super technical ones. So I'm, I'm excited to talk about um, interviewing today. So something that uh, it's great to have some insight to. So hopefully do it in a bit of knowledge share. Great, thank you, Jill. Um, audience, if you have any questions, please tweet them to hashtag vbrownbag or put them in the Q&A panel. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Cool. There we go. Okay, perfect. Cool, can you see my screen? that work? Yes, you're good. Okay, perfect. Uh, awesome. Well, yeah, like I said, I am going to be talking a little bit today about interviewing. I was actually just tweeting about this not that long ago, and I was trying to, like, just have, do some final tweaks, and one was the, the intro page. And so, so far in Jillvember, we've talked about uh, communication, resume writing and now interviewing and I was trying to think of like a fun way to say like interview like a pro but interview like a pro felt boring and so all the words that kept coming to mind were like pretty male like male sounding like interview like a champ or something like that so I, was, I decided we were going to make this one interview like a queen um, so so that we can uh, be, be inclusive uh, to all the individuals listening as well so that was just a little bit of fun for me. Um, but yes, yeah, so welcome to, like I said, the third of three Jill Vembers. It's been a blast this month getting to know y'all a little bit more and getting to, you know, have someone to ramble to every Wednesday night for a couple of weeks. So instead of just like my dogs. Um, <laughs> but perfect. We will we will jump right in then. I always like to do just a quick intro of me in case you hadn't. Um, you know, listen to other ones or, or heard before. So from a work perspective, uh, or I am Jill Jabinski, uh, if I, I didn't say my last name, I can't remember. Um, from a work perspective, I am the technical community manager over at Simple, which is a fintech company um, that is disrupting uh, the banking industry, um, and they're based in Portland, Oregon. We're super remote friendly, so I actually live in Seattle, uh, which is very fun. And from a background perspective, a little bit different and probably why uh, I speak to human factors instead of uh, technical factors, I have my background in psychology. So I got my undergrad uh, dual major in psychology and sociology and then went on to get a master's of science in uh, what's called industrial organizational psychology, which is basically the study of humans in the workplace. And it kind of all encompasses things from uh, research, uh, so very statistical based research, uh, to, to legalese, to training and development and organizational change, that kind of stuff. And then recruitment is just like a tiny piece of that. Um, but I'm really able to use a lot of things that I learned in grad school in my day to day life, which I think is pretty rad. Um, and then from a personal perspective, I'm the mom of two beautiful daughters who are currently locked in the bedroom because they were really barky today, um, but noodle and bean, and then um, uh, a fair amount of, that was going to sound really self-important. Some people know me online uh, as Hug the Sensor on Twitter or at Jill Jubs, uh, which is my official handle, um, and so yeah, I, I tweet a lot, um, and I'm, I'm qu quite odd and awkward, so many find it enjoyable. <laughs> uh, cool. So um, through being a technical com technical community manager, basically what that means is I am at Simple to help connect uh, 
people with communities and, and build communities, and whether that's internally or externally. So a piece of that is definitely recruitment, and that's uh, through like spreading the word of Simple, and so my, a lot of my background is in recruitment as well. So as we're talking about interviews today, I have done a tremendous amount of interviews uh, in my time, whether they be on the phone or in person, and I've obviously interviewed places as well. Um, and then I feel like I have a really good, like, overarching view of interviews because I've also been the first recruiter or first, like, of that that type of capacity individual at places I've worked before. So I've I've built out interview processes and know kind of best practices from that perspective. Um, so I think that this will be kind of a fruitful conversation. And so I'm already like rambling a lot. So again, as, as y'all probably know, please do feel free to interject, ask questions. Uh, I don't want to hear me talk for an entire hour or so uh, without interruption. So please make this like uh, a two-way two street here. All right, so you're interviewing or you're looking for a new job. Um, kind of we alluded to this last week with, with resume writing, but there's one like major pro tip that I give before you officially, or I guess at the beginning of your job search. And this is to do an exercise where you write your own job description. So let's say you know you, you're employed at the moment um, and you are just like finding it more and more painful for whatever a number of reasons um, to to like your role and you really want to look outside of the, the company that you're currently at uh, and and do something different um, in in whatever capacity. So I think this is actually like a, a fun thing to do and I don't necessarily mean it in the sense. Uh, you know, you might see a job posting online um, if you're at a, on a career website and it says like number of years of experience and blah, 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 and it's very like structured and whatnot uh, and, and pretty. It should be a little bit, you know, easy on the eyes. Uh, but what I mean and, and is, is this. It can, uh, the job description that you write can be focused and should be focused on the things that are important to you. So some of those things may be what you do on the day-to-day. -day. So say you love working in databases, like you would want to have that be a piece of, piece of your role. Um, but I really want you to think about this like big picture, like what makes you tick, what's important to you. Uh, I did this when I was uh, searching for my job at Simple, and it really helped me narrow my search. So as you know, I progressed through my years and worked at different companies, I found that a, a, a kind of deal breaker for me was working at a company that wasn't inclusive um, and wasn't like that wasn't a core value of theirs because I'm the one helping or one of the ones helping bring people in and I, I not only want to be able to bring all types of different human beings to the company but I want them to be uh, given a fair treatment and opportunity once they get in the company. So an, an environment to thrive where anyone can thrive. I have worked at companies where this is not, not possible in the past and it really just pains my heart and makes uh, work not as fun for me. So that was something that I, I really wanted to key in on, key in on as well. Uh, another thing may be like what type of team structure that you're, um, that really helps you uh, do your job well, whether you do a lot of like individual work or if it's very collaborative, things like that. So this job description can can kind of just be a, a letter-ish to yourself of like what's important to you before you even like start looking so that you can keep those things like keenly in mind as as you're looking for through that search. Jill, how detailed do we need to be with these? Is build cool things a legit job description? So yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think it, it's kind of up to you. I um, I don't think that build cool things is is a bad thing to put on there. You know, you might want to be working in a certain uh, a certain language or with a certain technology. Um, if that's if that's important to you, then then it should be on there. But I think that why I have this recommendation is so many people, and I've done it in the past for sure, uh, you go in a little bit blindly, like how you start a job search is you just start going to, I don't know, like Indeed, or maybe 
there's a specific company that you want to work for, so you just go to their career page and see what they have open without thinking about you as a, as a large component of this as well. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm very much um, a proponent of uh, the interview kind of going, going both ways, and we'll go more into detail on that later, uh, where you need to find the right company for you as the um, company needs to find the right candidate for them. And I think when both sides are really thoughtful in this process, then you'll get a lot more employees that are at a company and are bought in and will stay there much longer. Um, and we see this a lot, especially in high tech these days and in, in this, the startup world too, where people just switch jobs a lot. And I think it's because of that, because there's not enough thought behind like what you're really looking for and t too many people wake up you know, three or six months in and, and they're like, I actually like kind of hate this job. And I think that a lot of that could have been mitigated uh, with, with this kind of exercise. All right. How about, how, how do you make it more realistic rather than just your dream job? I mean, what if your dream job's totally unrealistic? Yeah, and I, I mean, I think that you definitely need to to be cognizant of that, um, of what you could really uh, accomplish. And I don't, I don't necessarily, uh, and if I said dream job, I, I could have. Um, I guess people think of dream job as like what I could achieve like way down the line. I think like a realistic dream job is important too where um, I mean I couldn't write a job description where like I'm gonna be the CTO of a company right now. Like maybe if I you know kind of switched career paths and did other things 15 years down the line or something like that's an attainable goal. Um, but you have to be aware of like what um, where your you know strengths and weaknesses lie and what you're capable of at the moment, um, and really like what it's about evaluating to like what's making you unhappy at the current role, and then writing that down into like what would make you happy in a new role, and sometimes uh, in that it might be that you realize that it's it's fixable things in your own current position and that maybe you don't need to, to find a new job. Maybe you need to have a better conversation with your manager and just to figure out like career path or, or other things. Um, but if, if it's things, what you're writing down is completely unobtainable uh, in current position because of you know X, Y, and Z, then it's figuring out like how, how you can work that elsewhere. Um, but also too, like when when you have this down, um, you have to know as well that when when you hit a final outcome, like wait, we're we're jumping ahead a lot, but like if, when you get a new job, uh, that there may be some like give and take, just as there is in in anything in life, and especially like I equate it to like building a product, like you know you're going to be working with other teams, and the developers might not always like be you know like they want it one way and like product manager wants it a little bit different way and there are some trade-offs um, so there's still opportunity for that to happen but I think that it's really just about you know sitting down and figuring out like what you want and so that you know more what to look for cool cool um, excellent so you've done that and then you just kind of like start start the job search so whether that's and there's no you know kind of right or wrong way to do this um, whatever kind of career sites you want to go to or if you know recruiters at, at companies that you'd like to work with feel free to reach out to them one thing and I'll just bring this up again that I, I spoke about uh, last week on resume writing was do your very very best never to like cold apply somewhere and what I mean by that is just applying to the career page uh, and then just uploading a resume and like you know crossing your fingers if there is any way to figure out you know if, so a lot of times there might be a link at the bottom that to an email address that's like the you know the recruiter inbox or something or if you know someone at the company just ping them and say like hey I applied and like if you wouldn't mind like reaching out to the recruiter and just like giving the giving a nudge or something um, do anything that you can to just you know 
have some way to put a gold star on your resume so that's so that uh, the recruiters are are hopefully giving it um, an extra look or something like that so so that's just kind of like a, a pro tip as well um, but so you've applied you're kind of uh, going through uh, the interview process and um, I was actually talking to my team members today, uh, Alana, who's one of my, my great co-workers, and I was asking her, like, what, uh, like, what's your main piece of advice as well, like, when people are interviewing? And it, it kind of went uh, a little bit deeper, but in tandem a bit with my, like, write your own job description. And it's, it's basically that um, before you interview, you have to, so you've, you've picked a place, like you are, are accept, quote unquote accepted to do an interview. You need to figure out like why you want to work there. And because um, people often focus so much on how do I make myself a desirable candidate, which I, I think is important, don't get me wrong, but what's at, at least equally important um, is to um, figure out why you should be there as well. So the last thing again that we want to happen is like you know you get in down the line and it's not uh, it's not what you wanted to be and you think like I could have mitigated this by asking key questions. Um, but just figuring out like what resonates with you about the company's mission or their values, what excites you about the actual work you'd be doing at that company. Um, it helps like connect the dots on some of the things uh, you would hit on before um, your job search, so when you did that job description, but a little bit deeper on. So now you have a little bit more context because you're starting to talk to a recruiter or maybe doing a, a technical phone screen. So you know the company, you're already getting some insight into the company. So as you're having those early conversations, figuring out what is exciting to you, is this aligning with with what I want and just being really thoughtful early stages of the process as well. Okay, cool. So then here comes uh, my one of my favorite pieces of advice because it involves me and my team uh, is that you really should just do your best to become best friends with a recruiter. <laughs> um, a recruiter is going to be this like your Yoda, <laughs> the source of light and insight into literally everything in this process. So the more that you can connect with them, the better. Um, I When I have candidates who I have become, you know, like, have a good rapport with and they are equally like enjoying like having conversations with me then then is the time where they they get to ask me all the questions and it, literally anyone is allowed to ask me as many questions as they want and I'll kind of get into what what types of questions you should be asking but I have candidates who will then like follow me on Twitter and DM me DM is like a great way to get get in contact with me um, and if like something random comes to mind, like oh, like does the someone asked me like oh, does Simple have a, a parking lot because we're like in Portland that that I'll be able to park at, or am I going to have to worry about street parking? So just like these one-off types of questions uh, that you wouldn't necessarily like call up your recruiter and ask. I mean, maybe you could, but if you're able to kind of build that rapport, um, then you you'll get like the most insider trade information ever. Which is really going to just like help help you through the process and help hopefully help you be more at ease in a process that is inevitably really nerve wracking and scary and you know uh, no one feels 100% comfortable because interviewing is is difficult and like there's a lot at stake. So in, especially if you really really like the company, then. Uh, you're you're even more like intimidated by the process. Okay, so is so being friends enough? Become, oh, sorry, go ahead. Is, is being friends enough, or is it is it still important to to kind of treat them more like an agent? Uh, so no, I I think that building human relationships is the most important thing that you can do during an interview process. Now, what I don't know if the person is referring to or not is 
an agency recruiter. So there's two types of recruiters. I just put up two fingers as if y'all could see me. I wanted you to know that. Um, <laughs> but one, one is an in-house recruiter, so they, they work for the company. Um, they are there on the day-to-day. -day. They understand culture, you know, work with hiring managers, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's an agency recruiter or a third-party recruiter, same, same difference. And basically, they work for many different companies. They kind of contract out, and they will be that extra arm when, you know, maybe a, a company has 10 roles to fill and there is not enough resources internally, so they need to help externally. So that person will do a call with people on the team, I, you know, maybe get like a 30 minute to an hour long understanding of what's happening inside the company, uh, which granted is, is not, I mean, it's not a hugely successful model in my opinion. It makes it difficult. That's, you know, I'm not like dogging on anyone. It makes it difficult for them to be successful though because they're not the insiders in the company. But so then basically they will try to find candidates and get them over to the recruiters or to the teams um, within the company. So from that perspective, they're still going to have a ton of insight. Like their goal, a good agency recruiter is going to be doing the same thing that I'm saying y'all should do and like befriending the internal recruiters so that they can have all of that insider information because at the end of the day, they a third party recruiter wants you to get hired because that's how they put food on their table. I mean, they're, it's a commission-based position. Internal recruiters are typically just paid a salary and so they don't get like any perks if they hire more people. It's just that they'll you know be successful in their job if they're hiring more people. They don't like get kickbacks. Um, whereas external recruiters, they are given a certain percentage of your first year salary um, to be able to, to bring, uh, bring you to the table. So there may be like a slightly different dynamic, but at the end of the day, still they are the one internal or external who's going to be able to give you the most insightful information into the process and into um, uh, what that will look like and kind of tips and tricks and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I would... Uh, I would not hesitate to like build the same types of bonds. Uh, I think that people a lot are, uh, I don't know if intimidated is, is the right word, but they just don't think of recruiters as, as someone they would necessarily want to be friend. Like they don't, I don't think that people often value the amount of, of detail and like, I don't know, just insider stuff that we could give, we as recruiters. So I, I think that it's important to be cognizant of that. Like no one is going to give you more time in the process than a recruiter is. Like their goal is to have you have the most excellent time throughout. And so the more that they help you out, the more that they're setting everything up for success. Net, net, don't be shy. Just, just ask all the questions you can and find out if the company's a right fit and if you're a right fit for them. Yeah, com yep, completely. Like, you should ask questions to the point, like, I, I often will have people ask me a lot of questions and then be like, oh, I don't want to bug you or that type of thing. Like, don't feel bad. That's actually a recruiter's job. Uh, and they do, the majority, I mean, the, the wide majority of recruiters that I know are never like irritated or anything if you're asking a lot of questions. Again, we want you to feel comfortable. We want you to succeed. Like we're your fan club. So <laughs> let let them help you um, help you be better. Um, excellent. So then like what kinds of questions should you be asking? Uh, I always like to, when I'm going through a process, or these are some of the things I was thinking that I like to tell candidates. Now, no one's perfect, I, so uh, I've definitely forgotten to do these types of things before, so, you know, but these are like the, the key things that will really help you out as a candidate. Um, so don't be afraid at the very beginning, even if like typically how you interview as your first call will be with a recruiter and it'll just be kind of a get to know you type of call, understanding why you're interested in the company, et cetera, et cetera, um, and like what you do. 
And so don't be afraid to ask them, like, what's the timeline not only of maybe feedback moving forward, but, like, what does the interview process look like overall? Like, let's say things went really well. How how should I expect this to look like? Is a is a technical call next? Like, is there kind of some kind of like code test? Is is there like a face to face interview or is it all video interviews? Like, you know, give me a a big picture just so that it sets expectations for you uh, to understand understand um, as well as it's going to be helpful if you're interviewing at multiple companies. That can be kind of tricky because. Maybe one's timeline is overall, like best case scenario, start to finish is three weeks. And maybe another one is not looking to hire necessarily. They're going to slow roll a little bit, and then it might be like over a month. So it's another like just key factor for you to figure out where you need to push and like where your interest is and like what's a deal breaker, what's not a deal breaker, um, but also will help you understand, you know, what's to come. And then with that, it's great to know who's going to be involved in these interviews. So especially as you're going step by step. So a lot of times for, and I'm just talking about, my most of my examples are technical interviews. Uh, so it might be a little bit different for non-technical, like when I say, oh, there's going to be a tech call. Like I don't mean to be exclusive in talking about technical interviews. Um, but but you can uh, you can <laughs> insert other words there and still follow these like key instructions. So a lot of times after you'll talk to a recruiter, you might talk to a hiring manager, and then you might do a technical um, technical interview of some sort, whether it be on the phone or on a video call or a code code test or something. Um, and just make sure to ask along the way when you're doing those who's going who's going to be involved. Like who am I talking to? Uh, I've seen recruiters before just say, oh, you're going to be like Bill, who's a member of the engineering team. <laughs> I just realized I picked a, a name that rhymed with mine. Um, is going to be uh, interviewing, doing a technical interview with you. Well, especially if you're interviewing at a very large company uh, and you, say you get a pretty normal name, it's going to be hard for you if you wanted to look up who that person was to, to figure out who that person is. So I always ask, and well, I try to give, and if, if the recruiter doesn't, don't be afraid to ask, like, first and last name of, of who um, who's going to be involved so that you can look them up on LinkedIn or wherever you feel comfortable, uh, and just get a little, you know, bit of better understanding about them, and just all those all those kind of key things. So um, who's, who's being involved? Uh, is key and then never being afraid to ask like how do I prep or what is this interview going to look like uh, and this kind of like is style of interview as well um, th those all kind of um, roll in together but so maybe there's a technical phone screen um, and like you don't have to go in that blindly and just think okay this is going to be a technical call I have no like I have no idea what's happening because as a human being, that's likely just going to make you more anxious uh, if you have if you have no idea expectations. So ask your recruiter like, what does the phone call usually look like? Or like, are there specific questions that they ask? Like, they likely they won't be able to tell you specific questions, but uh, for instance, a, a regular interview, that technical interview that I might have or have scheduled with an between an engineer and a candidate is like. There's typically like a 10 minute kind of get to know you, talk about some of your work history, and then it'll be about 30 minutes of there's two key questions or like exercises that, that you'll go through, and they really just talk through them with you, so it's very conversational, but it will be a technical conversation. And then about 15 minutes on the end for you all to wrap up and have an opportunity for you to ask more questions. Um, so that kind of thing is really gonna help help you as a candidate to one, know what to expect and two, when you hear maybe that like there's time for questions at the end that you can go in having a couple of questions prepped that really might be on your mind because when you're in the moment sometimes it's really difficult to be creative with questions because you're so, I don't know, like you know nerves just get the best of you and throw you, <laughs> throw you off your game. 
Uh, and so if you can go go in with those, like having having a couple that you know you want to ask, it's going to make your life a lot easier too. Are there any questions you shouldn't ask? Um, I'm trying to think if there are any that are completely off the... I, honestly, like I can't think of any candidate who has ever asked me a question that was just like weird or like too much of an outsider type of thing. Uh, the only advice that I have is if you have questions about like compensation or HR stuff or benefits or anything like that, just make sure to ask the recruiter those questions. Uh, a lot of interviewees, like someone, uh, an engineer internally, if they're talking to you, um, even with, you know, questions about time off or something like that, what I find is they could answer the question, but they get really nervous too about what they should or shouldn't be talking about. So it just in the effort to uh, make sure that you're asking the right person the right question, if it's anything like not related to the specific uh, you know, interview, then I would just like ping the recruiter first for that kind of stuff. What if it's a private company uh, and, and then you're asking questions related to like solvency and financials? Yeah, I wouldn't ask any any of that kind of stuff in an interview. I wouldn't, like, I've had that kind of stuff asked to me um, as a recruiter, and then I actually didn't know. I had to, like, ask someone else what I could and could not share. And so a recruiter isn't going to be necessarily, like, put off by that, um, whereas if you ask someone during an interview, they might be, like, a person besides a the recruiter. They might be a little bit more thrown off because they're not as, prepped as recruiters are at this kind of stuff. Um, so I, yeah, I would just direct it towards the recruiter. And then with that type of thing, just be understanding of maybe things that they can't share as well. Because I've definitely had people, I'm trying to think, like when I was at Rackspace and we were public, um, where people would ask me about the stock, like ask stock questions in general. Um, and, and that was fine. Or even like when I was at DigitalOcean, we were, uh, were, and they still are private, um, but people were asking about uh, like how, the, how much the company was valued for and that kind of stuff. Again, not, I mean, you know, kind of digging questions, but not, not like off the wall, nor, um, nor is it like something that, you know, you're going to get a tick mark that like it's bad that you asked. Um, I would just always, for those, just ask ask the recruiter and not any of like the individual uh, interview members. Great, thank you. Cool. Um, yeah, of course. And then and then with style of interviews too, this is um, can go even more so for like the the day. So like meaning if you're going in for a face to face interview, and that's what a lot of this content is prepped around too. I mean, I realize that the interview process is long, but the the day of the interview is like always feels like the culmination of like all the things, and that's where all the, the nerves and unknowns live, or the majority of them. Um, so it's good to be as prepared as possible. So like what kind of style are the interviews? Um, and, and what I mean by that is maybe from a technical perspective, they know that one might be a code interview and they don't, maybe they aren't going to necessarily tell you like what part of the day that's happening in, they may or may not know, um, but just say like there's going to be a couple that are focused more on team fit and, you know, um, organization and things like that. And then there's going to be a, a, a interview where you whiteboard, even though I hate whiteboarding, but um, there's going to be an interview where you whiteboard and then there's going to be, you know, this and that. Uh, so it's really good for you to know just, um, you know, the more you know about what you're walking into, the more you can prepare on your end before you get there. Is it appropriate then, then to of ask course, a about... great one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Is it appropriate then to ask about the Go personalities ahead. and... Um general communication style of your interviewers then? So I wouldn't ask about personality because um, I think that that's, 
I don't know what the word I want to look for for that. I don't think I think asking communication style is an interesting one, and and I don't think that that's off putting whatsoever. Um, but asking personality just seems a a bit more like not focus on the task at hand or something uh, like obviously it would be I mean it is kind of good to know um, but I think framing it in a way of like communication style is going to be perceived better for you um, by the interviewer uh, and so like it seems less, less judgy if that makes sense um, so you know whether what maybe some actually it's a good point too maybe some interviews will be uh, video interviews so like at my current role we have if you're coming in for a face-to-face -face, the majority are going to be in there in person but we have some remote employees so you might be doing um, a video interview with a few people throughout the day so that's obviously good to know and understanding like if if things break down like what happens if the video call breaks down and I'm in the room by myself like how do I how do I handle that scenario um, and just asking for that kind of context and feedback and you know how I typically frame it when I ask about like communication or something like that is just you know in, and again it's easier if you've built that relationship with the recruiter and just you know kind of asking them some some tips that you should know throughout the day. Is there anything I should know about uh, communication styles of the team? Like, obviously, you know, be come approach it very, um, you know, honestly and 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 you know, open to feedback of like, obviously, I want to make the the best impression that I can. Like, is there? Do you have any like tips or tricks of like how how you've seen people be successful in the past? Uh, through these interviews, maybe not just obviously they aren't going to be able to give you answers of like technical stuff, but what a recruiter's superpower is is one of them is understanding team dynamics, individual nuances, and things like that. Um, where maybe there's a person on the team that is very just like blunt and hard to read. Actually, this happened in the interview uh, in, in, when I was interviewing at Simple. Um, is that I got this kind of stuff like where um, someone, you know, there's some people like myself that like wear their emotion on their sleeve and I'm just like, you know, smiley all the time and so it's pretty easy to tell like if I'm, if I'm happy or whatnot, whereas someone else um, just might be a little bit more chill and that doesn't mean that they don't like you, it just means that's how they are. So they'll be able to tell you those kind of nuances and yeah, definitely don't be afraid to ask for that kind of stuff. Great, thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, and then last and it, very important is what to wear. So the last thing that you want to do is create any opportunity to feel uncomfortable in your interview. So a lot of technology companies these days are a little bit more laid back. That's kind of just the, the culture of, of a lot of tech. Um, so they might have a pretty a pretty open um, what's it called dress code if you will at work and so you don't necessarily want to show up like in a suit and tie if everybody else is wearing jeans and a t-shirt because you might feel weird or maybe you're not the type of person that feels weird and that's what you're most comfortable and confident in which is totally cool as well um, but just understanding like what what the vibe at the company is and like what others are going to be dressed at and then like appropriately and and what makes you feel most comfortable like what you should be wearing. I think that's very critically important. You don't want to feel like you want to feel or like you want to feel like you belong with <laughs> by like not ass assimilating or something like that, but you know, just like making uh, making yourself comfortable. Okay, so then next um, beyond that, okay, so you've asked your recruiter who's going to be involved. Like when I'm coming in for an interview day, like face to face, like who all the names are, who you're going to be, you know, interacting with, and then it's your turn to definitely do some research. So researching uh, the people who you're going to be interviewing with and that can be as easy as like LinkedIn to understand their background or 
a lot of times what I'll do, especially with more technical or more community driven people, there might be, you know, talks that they've given out there and you can really get a better understanding of, of what makes them tick or like what they're interested in. Because one of the core things that's going to get you higher marks on an interview is being able to form those connections. Obviously, these are humans that you may work with in the future. So they want to be able to connect with you. And that doesn't necessarily mean y'all are going to be best friends or anything. But to be able to have, um, be able to build that bond and understand that, you know, maybe uh, this technology is really what this human being is into and if you can find a way to like talk about it or or even say like oh I watched your talk on this like that's not that's not weird don't think that's weird I the majority 99% of, of people are going to be just like utterly flattered by that um, so don't feel like you are doing something wrong like I feel like sometimes people think they shouldn't look that much into people and I am it's just a sign to everybody that that you are, are putting in the work and you're putting in the effort, like that's how interested you are in the company. Uh, and then, of course, too, like research the heck out of the company more to understand like what, like what their values are. Um, I know that, you know, you may have looked into it at the beginning, but, you know, take an opportunity to dig even de deeper, like see what's happening with them in the market, like see what articles are out about the company and just you know to gain a better understanding of of who they are and where you might fit in that and what excites you about um, about that potential company and you know it's really like you're we want to see you like be curious if someone comes in and just you know with the I don't know like with the vibe of, of just Fully believing that they, uh, we should be inter we should be like excited about them without them like putting in any effort into into us as a company. Like it needs to be a two way street. We need to be excited about you. You need to be excited about us. So we love, um, and I say we, and I'm meaning just like every recruiter ever and every team ever is just like they love to see people who are curious. Um, and 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 doing things like checking into the company and checking into who you're going to be interacting with, it just shows that you're interested in in who you're going to potentially be working with and working for. And also, like if you're not interested in looking into those things, you might want to question to yourself like why you're interviewing at that company. Because I know for for myself, that's a point. That's the point of the process where it's like honeymoon stage you know like you're you're like you're just starting to date someone or something where you're like it's always like it's all exciting to look into um, like there's none of the none of the bad that <laughs> inevitably comes with any job uh, the ups and downs these are like all positive so um, at this point you really should be excited to to learn more and excited to um, you know understand more and 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 figure out where you could fit is there a point where that can go overboard or, or be too much? Well, I mean, I wouldn't like go friend the interviewers on Facebook or anything like that. Um, I, I think that like that kind of stuff is weird or don't try to like individually reach out to interviewers beforehand unless you like know somebody. Um, I've definitely had people through the process like, follow me on Twitter or follow interviewers on Twitter. Twitter is just so open that that's not weird. Um, I wouldn't necessarily like try to do a ton of communication um, with the person beforehand, but I don't think like following them on Twitter is a bad thing. Um, I, I think it's just like keeping, just like anything, like you, uh, you have to build a relationship with someone before you can like fully jump in so if you don't even it don't even know the human like don't cross those bounds but um, I think overall like any kind of any kind of research that's just like online and out there like you should not feel bad about that um, don't like come to the interview and be like hey I saw you had two kids or like your kid goes to the school like maybe you saw that but like that kind of crosses the line and that that's a little like weird um, <laughs> 
<laughs> but but just like general, yeah. Don't be creepy in the interview. Pro tip number one. <laughs> um, but yeah, pretty like general stuff. Like you know, work focus. Like all of that is fine. And I think that that's what um, what makes you know Twitter really okay to be like following people and stuff like that. Is especially within the technical community. On tw on Twitter, we talk about tech a lot. So Facebook is more like personal stuff um, and like friend and family stuff and and Twitter is more like, I don't know, just complaining and work. <laughs> um, so it's less it's less it's less weird to to go in there a little bit. So we got this question in Q&A, and I think it raises an interesting um, bit of discussion. It says, a paycheck isn't enough to be excited about. And I know personally for me it isn't, but I'm interested in your perspective on that. Say that again. You cut out for just a second. Oh, sorry. It says, a paycheck isn't enough to be excited about as a question. And I know for me it isn't, but I'm interested in your perspective as far as what you think about just being excited about the paycheck. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I, I agree. I don't think that um, a paycheck, I, I don't think a paycheck is enough to get excited about. Uh, um, for me, uh, I wrote a blog about this a while ago, but I really find that like what makes uh, employees content, and this isn't like make employees over the moon, like they're not just like just hoorah all the time of your company, but they're just like, okay, like this this job is is okay and will do and I'm, you know, generally happy here is that they're they feel like they're being paid fairly, that they're getting to work with people who they can learn from and they're getting to work on cool shit. And cool shit means a million different things to a million different people. So like cool shit to you could be like really boring to me. But it doesn't matter because it's your job and not my job. Um, so I really think that to be fully like fulfilled in in the way that work can fulfill you and I don't get me wrong you should have other things besides work um, that that you need all of those three things and and to be, figure out those other things um, is is doing like the background and figuring out like what what the company um, is built on and what you could be working on now I think that a lot of people do think of a job as a paycheck and uh, I, I honestly think that you're you're missing out on the potential for like more positivity like in your life if you really looked at it at full picture. And and don't get me wrong, like I'm from a family that is military and have you know I've been in relationships with people who work for the federal government. Like all of these human beings like think I'm crazy because I'm like I love my job and like my job is one of the reasons why I'm so happy in my life and my dad's like you're insane like that's not what work is so <laughs> um, I have those humans in my own family um, but but I think that you know it's really again it's really just missing missing a lot of opportunity um, for for more joy because you know a paycheck is it's I mean I need one it's cool don't get me wrong but it doesn't like fill my bucket the way that um, you know being able to be creative at work or working with collaborative teams or building inclusive teams does. So I need those other things as well. Right. You can have a paycheck and then do your job and come home and feel mad about it. Or you could have maybe the same paycheck and or even a little less and do something you love and come home and be excited about it. Um, for me, it's always better to do the latter. Yeah, no, I, I fully agree with that. And it's one of those things where, like, life is not, life is messy. And so as much as we want to separate work from home life, they just inevitably spill into each other. And so if you have a, a happy, generally happy, I mean, everybody has those days. Um, but if you have a generally happy work life that fulfills you, that's going to help make your overall big picture better because if you have a, a crappy work life that you just don't get any like fulfillment out of it, like that's going to seep into home and you know then it just creates more drama in general. And so like this is 
it's it's that understanding that is really um, you know should help help drive um, what you think of and what you do in life. Great, thank you. Okay, cool. So yeah, of course. Um, and all right, let's jump into some like a few pre-interview pointers. And and what I mean by these is things to do before you go in for your face-to-face -face interview. Um, so one thing is to practice the best the best that you can. And I know that this is difficult, and you can't necessarily like sit there by yourself and try to practice. But what is popping up a lot uh, is is in the meetup scene um, having I've seen it a, a ton here in Seattle and elsewhere um, where there there are meetups that are uh, focused on interviewing and how to improve yourself from a technical perspective um, and how to you know you'll hear like words of advice and things like that and given the opportunity to practice and especially there's there's ones or there's like some sessions online that I've seen um, like how to be better at, at uh, whiteboarding uh, interviews if you know you're going to have to do that. So doing a little bit of research that way. Um, of course, if you're about to interview, there's not necessarily going to be a specific cadence of meetups in your area about interviewing at that time. So it's something that, excuse me, you should always like keep your eye on in general um, so that if you interview in the future at some point, you might have this skill in your back pocket because it is one of those things that it is a skill uh, and you're not going to be perfect at it uh, over overnight, um, or maybe ever, because people don't necessarily interview that much. Um, and but so to get any kind of practice on it that you can um, would be great. And then finding any humans who have interviewed uh, at that company before. So maybe you know someone who works at the company, or maybe you don't. And uh, a lot of this can just be through online. So there's, uh, there's places like Glassdoor, or there's a tons of others where people give reviews and feedback. Um, I mean, very, very raw. And some of the things to keep in mind with that are people who usually post on those kinds of sites, which it can be insightful too, but a lot of them are like, really, really happy because they got a job or they're like really pissed. Um, so there's like a, a two very opposite ends. So take some of that with a grain of salt. But I've seen a lot of good insightful stuff about what to expect during the interview process um, on those. Or if, if you work in like, let's say you live in San Antonio and you're going to interview at Rackspace, like most of the people who live in San Antonio have interviewed at Rackspace at some point. So it's probably not that difficult to just like ask in your social circles or ask friends of friends, like, you know, that kind of expectation as well. So just, again, the more intel that you can get, the better. And then two prep questions that you want to ask. So again, if you have those things that are important to you, so having a really collaborative team is important to me, I would want to specifically ask about that in uh, in the process, or you might have a question that you you ask people, like people will ask a lot, like what keeps you at the company, and I think those are kind of easy answers, and they don't necessarily give you a ton of data because um, no one's going to say anything bad. I don't know, not bad, but I I, I think that you uh, should the questions that you ask should be getting some more insight uh, for you, maybe like. How do you, if you're an engineer, like how does your team work with like product management or like what methodologies are you using or like something like that where you can just get gain a better understanding and, and actually having like outside the box questions, it tends to impress interviewers. So that will be just like a, a plus for you as well. There seem to be a couple of schools of thought when it comes to asking questions in interviews where they're, they're here to find out if, if I'm right for the job, so I'm coming in and I'll have a couple of questions, but the focus should really be on, on what they want to know about me versus come in and ask questions and fill the time with asking them questions so that you know what you're getting into. Um, what are your thoughts on balance with regards to how many questions the interviewee should ask the interviewer? 
Yeah, that's actually a, that's a, a great question as well. Um, I would say, so I was tip I was actually framing this, which I didn't even realize until this was brought up, thinking that the majority of interviewers typically will save a couple of minutes at the end for the candidate to ask questions. So that's kind of what I was thinking. I would say to let, at least at the beginning, let the interviewer drive. Um, by asking questions and then of course if there's any kind of like dead air don't be afraid to ask questions or if a question like this happens to me a lot if a question will come up like as they're asking you something like you have a question in the middle like don't be afraid to ask a question as well that might kind of tangent off that or be a side note or something um, but I would in general like not try to like take over um, but I think that asking questions is important uh, and it's important for them to see that you are curious as well and I've even had I've had a fair amount actually of a lot of times or a lot of companies that I've worked at will do an interview and then the next day or so we have a feedback session and I hear a lot that feedback will be well they didn't have any questions and so they take that as someone is not interested so keep that in mind um, and the only time I really as a recruiter and I've heard this from other recruiters will really push back on that is if someone is if it's like the end of the day like if you're in the last interview and the interviewers are like well they didn't ask me any questions and they've been there for like six hours you, you get a free pass after six hours to not ask questions because everybody is completely brain fried by that point um, but in general, but that's actually when it's great too, to like why you would have that list of questions so you don't even have to think. You're just like, oh yes, uh, this is the one that I didn't get to ask yet. Um, but, but yeah, in general, I think it's, it's super, super critical actually to, to come prepared with questions um, to show, show your interest and to gain more insight instead of like it being all focused on you. Nice. All right. And then, yeah, and then a few things for the day of um, just to, uh, for the face-to-face -face interview. So these are some, some you know, pretty easy things, but always uh, just be good to be aware of. So be early. Um, okay, so this is, if you, I've had people show up to interviews like an hour early. I, th and that just kind of makes it awkward because you're gonna have to sit in the front forever so I would advise like that if you're that early just like go get a coffee next door or wherever um, I would I, I the earliest I would say be there is like 20 minutes early um, beyond that it just you know like you'll probably just be sitting in the front getting nervous and the recruiter feels they feel bad that you have to be sitting in the front um, and so there's just like a general weirdness at the beginning so I would say you know 20 minutes early is more than more than enough time but just make sure that you're uh, finding the location beforehand uh, so it's not the day of that you have to worry about that kind of stuff you know I like to do a drive by beforehand just so I know exactly how to get there um, and then you know bring supplies so bring a notebook uh, I, I prefer a notebook um, instead of like a computer for interview days just because I think that it can always look like you're doing something else or you know computers are just distracting so you know just really easy bring it back <laughs> pen and paper uh, to have to to take notes and then maybe to have your questions that you might have uh, written in there as well um, and then uh, a resume so actually Cody and I talked about this last week I think about whether people bring resumes or not I've done it both ways and I mean the majority of interviews that I've done I mean we don't require candidates to bring interviews I have I mean bring resumes I haven't for a while um, but if it makes you feel better to like just have one or two on you like that's that's totally fine as well so um, don't feel weird uh, and then of course <laughs> to, to breathe then and relax the best you can actually sometimes I think it's better to to be in the location, not necessarily the building early, and and know that there's a coffee shop down the street, so that you can just like take take a few breathers and 
and decompress a little bit before you before you come. Now, uh, sustenance is a good one. So bringing water or a snack. They we typically like try to make candidates as comfortable as possible, and the majority of places do. But there's sometimes where like the interviewers will just forget because they are only in there talking to you for 45 minutes or an hour that you've been doing this for like a number of hours and that you might need um, a drink of water or like something to eat. So I always just like to have kind of backups and you know try to relax the best you can um, even though it's a high pressure situation. Uh, and then lastly like be cognizant of everything though. A lot of times you are, I mean, the, the minute that you walk in the door, kind of assume that the interview is starting, and we'll get a lot of feedback um, from our front desk uh, about how the candidate acted towards them or, you know, reacted to someone else or if you interact with anyone. Like, we're getting feedback from all over the place. That just that, that sounds kind of creepy like Big Brother, um, but, <laughs> but it is like... We want to understand like how you treat people like we've had um, when I've gotten feedback from the front desk it's because like a candidate came in and they were really, really rude to them um, because they just think oh you know I don't know front desk whatever like not important I'm not interviewing yet where it's really you know it's it's critical that you are respectful um, to everyone in the building and and be understanding of that and know that it's it's game time kind of the minute that, that you walk in the front door. All right. And then the main the, the main thing for me is just to be yourself. Like I understand that um, an interview day is full of stress and anxiety and nerves, but you really want to do your best to be your genuine self, and that's where you're really going to be able to to connect with the others in the room and really you know get a feel for if you are you know if it's meant to be like for you to be at this company so uh, some of these things like to keep in mind during the day too along with like you know being genuine um, is is wording and what I mean by that is try not to be too negative um, or at least like be as positive as you can and this is typically around like past or current kind of work situations where I understand if something is like you're interviewing so clearly things aren't a hundred percent awesome at, at the at the job that you're at but you don't want to be talking too negative because what interviewers tend to think then is not that they're in a situation that's negative it's maybe this person is just always negative and of course you don't want to come across as that so just be be aware um, that that's how it might come across um, I hear that a lot in feedback um, make sure to highlight yourself though and don't be afraid to take ownership of things and it's important uh, in feedback sessions all the time we talk about I versus we and where the candidate actually did things and you know they kept saying we um, and and maybe they actually owned all of it but we don't know so don't be afraid to like point out what you did don't take responsibility obviously for other for things that other people did but don't be shy like this is your time to shine and um, it's not it's not a uh, you know gloating it's just you know telling telling it like it is and, and making it known a few other like key things don't be afraid to say I don't know I more nine times out of ten um, even more than that actually it, that's a super positive thing um, when someone hears you say that it shows that you're very human and obviously none of us know everything and that's totally fine um, and you know and being able to admit that is especially in a in an interview is cool don't be afraid to take a minute to think about a question so a lot of times if someone if an interview is asking you something you feel the need to like you gotta snap back really quickly and some of the questions are difficult or you might have to like think back in your history a little bit so it's okay to kind of like take a pause and and think about that because a lot of times and I'm speaking a hundred percent from experience here if you try to kick back too quickly without thinking you start talking and then you're just like kind of rambling and then I don't know like maybe there's 
some some unintentional like falsities in there as well and you don't want to just like ramble on about things uh, to the best that you can so it's better to just like have a breather think about it and then and then kind of dive in and and to that note too if somebody asks you something that you don't really understand instead of you know doing your best to BS through the question it's best to just ask them for clarification like if they, you know, what they meant by that, or if they could reword it, or, or just kind of those types of nuances. Don't be, don't be afraid to uh, say that you don't understand and that you just need some clarification before moving forward. How many of those are too much, though? How many times can you say I don't know before before they kind of write you off? Um, well, I mean, I I think that most of the I don't knows typically come around specific tech or something like that. Um, so if if you're asked a question that's more behavioral based, like how did you handle a situation like this or this, where um, they just want to see like how you interact with others, those are not great ones to say I don't know. But if they're like, oh, were you working with, um, you know. Python 2.0 to you know something or another, and uh, and and it's okay like to say I don't know for that, and but but maybe too to follow up with saying like this is how I would fi find out, or when I didn't know something in the past about this or this, this is the the route that I took to educate myself, or how I worked with others to figure those things out, or like ask for help. So I I mean I wouldn't try to make it a lot. Um, but definitely, like, don't feel bad to say, I don't know. What about time? How much time is too much? For, like, a particular question? Yeah, just to, to spend on a particular question. Um, so I, I wouldn't worry about that. I would say that if, a, if you're taking, quote, unquote, too long, the interviewer will typically like route, like reroute you a bit into the right direction. So um, if if someone thinks that, but uh, I wouldn't worry about like going into detail or telling the full story of whatever you wanted to tell. I've not, or I've rarely heard of an instance where someone complained about a candidate like going into too much detail. What about getting into nuances of which answers are, are more correct or most correct um, when an interviewer and yourself has perhaps a disagreement or, or a different point of view on something? How, how far down to that rat hole can you go? Yeah, so I would be very weary about disagreeing. Agree. Well, I don't want to say you can't disagree because I think that you can respectfully disagree with someone and not, you know, not be like you're wrong. Um, but you know, framing it in the way of like, oh, well, I in in the past or you know, maybe have you thought about doing it this way? Like, I hear a lot of positive feedback about those kinds of just like at your normal work or in your normal life, like have, being able to have those interactions where you don't agree with everything because inevitably, especially if you're a technologist of any sort, you're probably going to have strong opinions <laughs> um, about things. But being able to have those conversations in a, in a respectful and thoughtful manner, um, is it can be really telling in a positive way about who you are and how you interact with others and those types of things. So I would je definitely just like steer clear of negative language, but it's okay to um, have a have a nuanced conversation. Great. What about in the pausing before answering? Is there an amount of time that is too long? <laughs> no, that's uh, that's funny. Um, I do not think there is an amount of time that's too long. If what I've had happen before is, I mean, a normal amount of time, like someone asks you a question, you know, give it ten or fifteen seconds or whatever. If you feel like it's longer, you need more time, to, feel free to just be like, hold on, like, give me just a second to think about that. And because that might, like, clear the air a bit or, like, take some of that, like, I don't know, you know, dead space out of the air. 
Um, but I, I mean, I wouldn't, you know, wait five minutes to, to kick back, but uh, taking an appropriate amount of time, maybe, you know, 30 seconds a minute, something like that, and just being like, you know, like, I'm just trying to think of something, just give me a second, um, it is great. If it, because inevitably or it typically will come to a more like fruitful conversation or, or articulate answer and that's what the interviewer is looking for as well. So it just takes you a minute to get there, like that's fine too. Good, thank you. That's all the Perfect. questions we have for now. Okay, Brad. All right, so then you interviewed and you left for the day. Sometimes the recruiter will be the one walking you out and you can have kind of follow-up questions then or sometimes it's just the last interviewer and they just say like, see you later. Um, <laughs> so basically <laughs> what, what you should do um, and, and whatever, it can be later that day, it can be the next day, whatever makes you comfortable. I don't think that there's a, a wrong answer for one to follow up, but you should ping your best friend again. <laughs> um, and, you know, do a couple of things at that point. One, it's always nice to say thank you. Uh, um, and giving any insight into your feels for the day, uh, you know, thank you. I, I really enjoyed spending time there, like had great conversations. Even like pinpointing certain people is totally fine. Um, I often get asked if they can send like a thank you to the team or thank you to individual people. I don't personally, and most recruiters won't, give out uh, individual email addresses because I just feel kind of strange doing that. Um, just like I wouldn't give someone's number out. Um, but what I do say to a candidate is like, hey, if you wanted to write a general like thank you to the team, I'm more than happy to shoot it over to the team. Um, so, so that can be done as well. I think that not that many people write thank yous anymore and the people who do, it generally makes a really positive uh, impression on uh, everyone involved and I mean everyone just kind of likes that. So it can you know just be via email or whatever. You don't, again, you don't have to do it. I think this is just kind of a best practice. But one of those things where everybody took time out of their day and especially if you had great conversations with people, just kind of highlighting that and, and saying thanks is, is really nice. Um, and then asking, you know, the recruiter expectations on timeline um, and and when you can expect feedback. And uh, some people feel like they're being pushy if they ask for that kind of stuff, but that's definitely not the case whatsoever. Like, it's going to help, <coughs> excuse me, it's going to help you, I don't know, relax and like sleep at night a little bit to understand when you can expect feedback because this is like, to me, the most difficult part of of an interview process is waiting the anticipation of like what's going to happen next and you know like the longer it takes like you might leave and you're like I kicked ass and then uh, you don't hear anything the next day and you're like I think I did okay and by like five days later you're like I did terrible the world is crumbling <laughs> um, so trying to <laughs> trying to alleviate any of those potential feels for yourself is going to be really helpful. So just asking like what the expectation is um, for for getting information back and kind of going from there. And then when you do get feedback, um, <laughs> I just thought this was a cute thing. This is not even really applicable, but uh, <laughs> when you do get feedback, um, just be as, as kind and courteous during the process as possible. Like getting feedback is hard. And getting feedback from an interview is really hard and it's not necessarily going to be all positive. Like you, you may, they may decide to move forward with an offer, they may not. But you want to leave the best impression on them uh, as you can as well. Because for, from my personal experience, one really crucial thing, one you never know when like paths will cross again, but also I've had people interview at the same company multiple times and then got gotten the job like the next time, like a year later or something. Um, so you never know like what your interaction with this company is going to be again. So just be just be kind um, during the process. So and especially like if you get negative feedback again, that can be difficult if they're not moving forward. But what I would 
really push you to do is if they're not moving forward with an offer to ask them for specific feedback as to why you're not getting an offer, why you're not moving forward. It's, it's as you can imagine, the absolute worst part of a recruiter's job is declining candidates, especially candidates that they have become you know, close, uh, close with and y'all really liked your interactions together, like that's a little bit of a heartbreaker, but it's crucial that you use uh, a negative experience and uh, create kind of like the best, the best thing you can from it. So understanding where you miss the mark from a technology perspective or from a team fit, team fit perspective, just so that you can use it as an opportunity for for growth um, and an insight into how you should maybe interview better in the future. Like I. I've talked to people who didn't necessarily, um, I don't know, understand like that they that they came off a certain way in a, in an interview, and it's great for me to be able to share that with them so that they can be more aware because it's hard to be self-aware uh, and and try to like do better in the in the future. So it's really key, and it's totally okay to to ask for more feedback. And of course, there's some things that a recruiter can't can't specifically tell you, but they can definitely give you a little insight into into why that decision was made. Is there some kind of feedback decoder ring that you could share with us? Like um, I wish. Um, but Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say that you typically, like, uh, from a recruiter, they'll typically just, like, try to, if, if they're trying to avoid, which is a lot, because it's hard, man, it's really hard, um, they'll just like shoot you an email and say like we've decided not to move forward, um, like that is, that's tough, and, and that's just like honestly a recruiter just sheltering or like shielding themselves from like this painful part of the process too, um, but yeah, just uh, that kind of if, if you get just bland feedback like that, like we're not moving forward, uh, don't take it as like personally offensive. It really is just like a recruiter either like not feeling like doing their job or sheltering themselves from doing the really difficult part of their job. So pushing back and just like asking for better understanding and um, you know whether that's via email or, or on the phone or something like that um, is really going to be helpful. And there's Honestly, there's going to be some recruiters who are not awesome and, and they won't give you feedback, um, but it's definitely like don't feel like it's against the rules to get feedback. It's totally positive and, and a really great interview process will end, um, if it doesn't end an offer, it will end with not an offer, but, but feedback for you to help learn and grow. Great. How, how soon is too soon to follow up? Uh, I don't think that there is any amount of time that's too soon. So if you like leave an interview, I myself have left an interview and writ written an email that evening um, because I am like really uh, impatient. <laughs> um, so uh, I don't think that there's any particular amount of time that's that's too soon. Like don't feel bad. And and again, uh, especially if it's via email, because an email is so much like less pressure than a phone call. Um, so if it's if it's quickly after, like don't don't feel bad to to shoot an email. I would say for a phone call, I would wait a, a day or so to follow up. Um, but I think that honestly, I think an email for for the situation is better, unless for some reason you can't get a hold of someone um, via email. But uh, you can follow up with a call. But I just think recruiters are pretty diligent about their inbox and that kind of thing. So um, I think that's a, yeah, as soon as you want is fine. With regards to follow up questions on feedback, is, is that a a one time thing and then you get what you get, or do you think? the door is opened to continue to follow up? Is there a going overboard there? Yeah, that's a good question too. So I would say it's typically a one-time thing. So whatever the recruiter is able and willing to give you, they'll give you in that first shot. Meaning like if they, if you, they give you a bland answer and you ping back and then they give you like 
something a little bit more, then that's probably all that you're going to get. Um, so I would be cognizant, unless it's seeming like a really open back and forth discussion, to not push too much beyond that initial like blurb or whatever that you get, um, because you still again want to make like leave in the in the best graces with that company as well. So you don't want to I don't know come off as uh, as I don't know what the word is that I'm looking for, um, but but you just want to leave with a positive impression. And so uh, I've heard some negative things about like oh this candidate is just like continuing to follow up. And and it makes I, I think where the negativity then would come from is from a recruiter just not not having more information to give or not knowing what to say to. Um, and so then there is like this weird mix of emotions um, for that. So I would just say if you push the first time, say like they give you a generic response, you say, hey, I'd love a little bit more feedback so that I can make this a, an educational process for me. They give you some like that 95% of the time, that's all that you're gonna that you're gonna get from them. Great. Okay, perfect. Um so yeah, so that's that's pretty much all I have for today um, as far as interview goes. Uh, so unless there's any more questions. Oh my gosh, I just realized what time it is, man. I've been talking for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we went a little crazy with the questions, but it's all great stuff. Um, key points for me. Yeah, no, totally. Really just befriending the recruiter and showing your curiosity and being as positive in all your interactions as, as possible, right? Yeah, yep, no, those are great. Recruiter, uh, recruiter is your number one fan and your number one like alliance through this. So definitely, uh, we, we continue to get a bad rap <laughs> from everybody, but we will help you, I assure you. So don't be afraid of, of building that bond. Wonderful, Jill, thank you. Um, I don't see any more questions on the panel, so I'm going to go ahead and close things out. Um, really appreciate your time today. Love the Jill Vember stuff. Please check us out on thebrownbag.com, and you can also check out Jill's other sessions as well if you're interested. Thanks, everyone. Perfect. Yeah, thank you all for having me. <laughs>